Hey everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my, my friend Amelia is back. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, there's been some up and downs, ups and downs recently, uh, but other than that, pretty good. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is kind of my my average question. Like I, I, I love to ask you instead of my kids, because I'll ask my kids how's school going and they just tell me fine, but we actually talk about it. <laughs> How's school going? <laughs> um, fine. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going well. I love my academics and things like that. But there has been there has been things where I feel like, especially at an evangelical school, a lot of my friends and myself. I always go with the evangelical stuff because it's like just forefront for me, and we kind of make a lot of rules for ourselves. And I've been like struggling to like think, okay, well, I'm forgiven, but then also think like, okay, should I feel guilty about this? Is this something that I should have a rule for? Like what's the the balance between having rules and not and forgiveness and, and all this jumble of things. And gotcha. so that's something that's like, just been like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. So, um, like this isn't like for, for starters, this isn't like bash the evangelicals way. Um, <laughs> this, this is, uh, this is sort of a, a chance to confront that. Like this tends to be just sort of how we, we want to reason with Christianity. Evangelicalism is, is in a large part, just sort of the way that we would sort of simply approach the scriptures. When we, when we talk about it though, the thing that sort of curves us away is, is, well, like you said, there's a lot of law here. We go looking for the gospel. We go looking for for Jesus. Um, so this is not just to bash evangelicals, but it's to sort of say like, if this is sort of the the fear that I have to live on under this system, like what answer is there? And there's this thing that comes up with with lots of extra rules and and laws. Um, and it happened uh, in the Garden of Eden. Uh, it happens today. Uh, quite frankly, it, it happens all around us. So you know how many commandments God gave us, right? Yeah, you know why there's more rules? Because we can't follow those. Like, hey, honestly, like if, if there, there there are rules in place because somebody did something stupid. Like this is this is sort of your claim to flip my claim to fame is that like I have had rules invented because of my behavior. Um, like you have ever have you ever done something just dumb enough where like nobody's allowed to have this thing anymore? Have you ever been the reason that people can't have nice things? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure I've been it. Been many um, times. <laughs> yeah, I, I have been the reason that people can't have nice things. That there are more rules because we're afraid of crossing the big ones, and so we sort of pop, put the smaller ones there to sort of ward us off. You see it in the Garden of Eden too. I mentioned so, like when God made the tree of knowledge of good and evil and said, "Thou shalt not eat of it, lest you die." Did He say, "Don't touch it"? No, He did not. No, he but you, you know it. when when the serpent confronts Eve, she makes extra rules because she's afraid of it. We, we put up these extra rules to, to sort of keep us one step back from, from the, the big ones that we're actually really, really afraid to cross. Um, and, and so when it comes to these, uh, you, you get to sort of pick right and wrong, especially when it comes to guilt, not from the man-made rules, because a lot of times those are, are completely arbitrary and sometimes actually used for great corruption of conscience. So, so what the devil then started to lean on uh, with Eve in the garden w was this God who put that tree here can't be a good God. You're right. You should, you, you should distrust him. But what we want to do instead of not even touch it is we want to eat the fruit so that we can be like God so that we don't need him anymore. You're right in not trusting him, but what we need to do is lean into that. Um, and, and in the same way, when we, when we make these extra rules for ourselves, um, a lot of times the, the, the evil one will very much sort of come up and say, look at these you can't even follow how can you call yourselves worthy of love if if you can't even follow the simple ones let alone the big ones and so for us um guilt is easy to find uh it, especially inside of christendom um because we, we we recognize this whole sin bit that needs grace um but the the sin bit needs grace so when we when we go looking to see is this a good thing or a bad thing go to the ten commandments and this is actually why we have them. Uh, in, in Lutheranism, we have a small catechism where Luther kind of unpacks what the commandments actually mean. So like, thou shalt not murder just doesn't mean don't stab people, but like, we should <laughs> and love God so that we don't hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. Because Jesus says, if you have hatred for your, 
your 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 neighbor in your heart. You've committed murder in your heart, right? And so love your neighbor probably means more than just don't stab them today. Um, so so we, we get to sort of take all of the things we feel guilty over and just ask like, which commandment is this? And here you can start to parse the extra rules, like which commandment is this? And and you can do it in, in, in terms of, you know, like bedtime. Like, do I do I need to go to bed by a certain time or else I'm a bad Christian? Well, like what commandment are you breaking? If, if you have a, a parent who says like you need to be in bed by, you know, nine o'clock. OK, there's a fourth commandment. We can talk. But like if you're just trying to heap guilt on yourself for not being studious enough when you're already struggling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, exactly. That is like a lot of what this stems from is like things like that where it's like oh i'm not studying enough or oh i didn't like dress academically enough <laughs> it's even silly things like that where it's like people are not viewing me in the way that i should be viewed as a good student kind of thing do you know what Almost. word you accented every time you were sort of talking about this like even the way you spoke it <laughs> i'm not sure it was it was enough Am I doing this um, enough? Hmm. Enough is even realize for that Christians, um, because y y your enough isn't going to come from your works. Uh, for by works of the law, no one is justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. the The law exists if you're actually doing it justice to show you that you in and of yourself are never going to be enough, but you are enough in your Savior. You are enough in your baptism. And so are you, are you academic enough? Well, you are a student. This is your vocation. It's God given, but your enough comes from the fact that you're a baptized student. Every day, your sins are forgiven. Every day you are washed clean in the blood of the lamb and the waters of your baptism. Every day you are called holy and worthy of love and enough. So that as you are a student, the question isn't, am I enough of a student? It's just, is there something to learn today? And I'll strive towards learning it. There are things in that can help me learn. So like, would it, would it be helpful to get one hour of sleep or, or more helpful to get eight hours of sleep? Okay, but like we, we can say let's let's aim for a little bit more sleep. That that'd be good. But guilt doesn't get to then own that conversation anymore. Because like my enough is already settled. Am I are you dressed academically enough? Well, you're you're dressed in, in the robes of righteousness that cover all your sin. You're dressed in the robes of heaven. That that's how you're seen. So so your enough part is covered. Um we can talk then about sort of what else is going on there. Like uh, there, there are ways to, to maybe show some respect to the professors. So like if, if uh, I care about this thing, I'm going to take it seriously. I, I don't want to show up disrespectfully. Uh, I, I get that, but you're enough. Your enough is already covered. So, so these extra rules that come, we can say like, they're, they're not necessarily bad things, but if they're going to only be used for guilt and never for an actual guide, then the law is being sort of turned in on itself. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. It's it's pointing us more almost to ourselves than to the forgiveness that Christ offers. And it's interesting. Sorry. Oh, I just was thinking about like sometimes when I feel this 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 guilt and stuff, I, I tend to do the thing that I'm worried about doing or feeling guilty about doing even more, mm -hmm. which is so weird. <laughs> No, it's not. Um, it's actually what Paul says is going to happen. He's talking about this in Romans, and I'm blanking on the chapter right now. Maybe you'll recognize it. But he said, uh, I, I would have never known what it is to covet until the law said, you shall not covet. Uh, the law exists to make you aware of your trespasses. Like it, it, it's, it's a reflection of who God is. And are you God? Like just just checking real quick, Emil, you are, are you are you the blessed Savior born of the Virgin? To no, um, no. The law? We'll show you, you're, you're not Jesus. You're also not supposed to be. There's actually a commandment against trying to be God. It's the first one. Um, so, so you can take a breath there. But, but you're right. When you're, all you are focused on is, is how do I, I get more sleep? Well, I'm, I'm going to actually be anxious about getting more sleep and stay up too late. <laughs> I relate to that so much. So, so <laughs> when, when we deal with this, the answer is not going to be try harder especially to eliminate the guilt um, because like trying harder will, will only sort of mildly satiate that. Like, well, I, I tried harder than I did yesterday, but then you got to try harder than the next day. And sooner or later that trying should actually probably result in something or else what are you doing? But, but instead Luther says, for example, when you're going to sleep, we make the sign of the cross right before we go to bed and other, not, not because it's magic or voodoo or anything. It just means I am baptized. Do, 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 do. It, it just means Lord, I commend this whole mess to you. You, you figure it out. It's not enough. And he goes, you are enough. 
that's what that baptism is. You are enough. The sleep that you get, it's enough. And, and it, it'll never be by the works of the law because I'll still wake up tired and I'll still wake up anxious and I'll still wake up with too much to do and, and not enough coffee. But, but the Lord still speaks and, and says, you're enough is already settled. Until you can screw up in a way that takes Jesus off that cross, your enough is settled. So, so when we start to say like, is this helpful? We we can say, let's lean into it. But but as far as should I feel guilty over it? Well, which commandment are you breaking? And if you're not breaking a commandment, don't feel guilty. Like like answer it that way. The devil be gone. There there's no guilt here. And if you are breaking a commandment, then you get to say. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. And again, get to say, guilt be gone, devil be gone, because my sins are forgiven in Christ. Amen. That is good. Yeah. That is that's so beautiful, actually, just how that works. And that I I don't know. I don't have words to describe how like joyful that makes me feel, actually. Um can I ask you another like one last question, like a follow-up? Yeah. <laughs> so how would we how can we help others who are feeling this guilt and like helping them hear the words of forgiveness. So this is kind of the thing. Um, you can't hear them from your own mouth. You, you can only hear them from somebody else. Like I need my pastor to come and tell me about my guilt, that, that it's put away. And, and you, need a, you, you need somebody to speak it to you. And sometimes it's your pastor and sometimes it's your friend or your parents or your loved ones. Your pastor actually gets to give you the, the precious sacraments of Christ to do it. Uh, but, but nobody gets to forgive their own sins because all we sort of have are the yeah buts that that sort of whisper deep down in our own hearts um and so as far as how to actually speak to somebody about this um you can sort through the law on one hand and the gospel on the other and, and we did it in kind of an ordered fashion so we said like what is it that's bothering you like like what is it um and, and name it name it for what it is and and sometimes it's really really embarrassing uh, sometimes it's way more embarrassing to us than it is to the other person um that that i i have a friend who's just I'm, I'm that friend. Um, I, I'm <laughs> deathly embarrassed. I am deathly embarrassed uh, of, of certain things that nobody thinks twice. And we're like, yeah, man, that's just life. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus, don't, don't make such a big deal about it. I'm like, no, it is the end of the world. You don't understand. Um, all I have is this. I, and sometimes I'm too afraid to even name it, but but it's there. So so we get to say, like, what is the thing that's bothering you? If you don't want to name it, you don't have to. But but actually, like, put a put a, a point on it, even if you're not going to say it to me, what is it that's bothering you? And then is that thing that's bothering you, is it actually against the 10 commandments or not? Because if it's not against the 10 commandments, like take a breath and, and recognize where it comes from, because you know what Satan translates to, right? Accuser. Accuser. So if it's not against the 10 commandments and you're being accused, huh. yeah. If it is against the Ten Commandments, it's still his job. And, and then we get to say, all right, so this Ten Commandment thing that I broke, is that a good thing or a bad thing that I broke? And well, it's a bad thing. Did Jesus die for me? Did Jesus die for you? You actually get to point your friend not then to the try harders, to the excuses or to the blame, because those are the those are like the default ways that we go through. It's why we come up with all these extra rules, right? So I messed up there, but like, what if I put up four more rules to stop me from messing up? Because like I, I know I'm supposed to get more sleep, so I, I'm going to put extra rules in. So I'm going to have no caffeine after 6 p.m. I'm going to stop eating, and I'm definitely going to sh- I'm going to put my phone down by seven. And now, not only have I not got enough sleep, but I also feel guilty for being on my phone too late. I'm I'm drinking coffee like right now. Um, <laughs> it's just all I got, and I, I heap guilt on guilt on guilt, trying to get away from guilt. We we try and fix our guilt by making more rules to keep us safe, and instead of sort of turning somebody back to the law. You get to say, did Jesus die for you? Yes or no? Let, let that be the place to answer your guilt. Your, your sins are forgiven because Jesus died for you. Remember that. And, and this is the place that, that we get to, to hear about over and over again. Like we can't even point ourselves there. Like we need other people to point us to this. That's the beauty of like confession and absolution and being able to have communion with and fellowship with other people too. Yeah. So there, there is, you get that uniquely at church. Um, you get confession, absolution from your pastor, but there's also something uh, in our book of Concord, like the rule book for being a Lutheran. Uh, it's called, uh, it, it's called the consolation of the brethren. Um, what, what it means is, is that we are the body of Christ. And, and so you and me, we're in this together. And, and that means that, that even if, if I can't absolve your sins, uh, I, I can point you, I can point you to hope and I can sit with you when you feel bad and I can love you in the midst of it. 
And, and one of the most beautiful things that we get to be then for each other is uh, somebody who, who points to Jesus. Um, and I can say, like, even uh, you can say to me, you're, you're, you're not my pastor, but you get to tell me Jesus died for you. You get to tell me you, you want to worry about that. You can lose sleep if you want to, but I need to, I need to promise you that, that God's got that under control. He already died for you. He already rose. And this thing that has you so afraid, this thing that has you so worried, it's forgiven. And we get to be in this together. Um, Christianity is is one of the sort of the unique religions this way is that it 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 starves when we're alone. There, there's so many other religions where like you need to go on a vision quest, you know, you need to sort of like go off in nature. I'm serious. And like, just meditate on things and just sort of come to your own conclusions. Christianity is a communal religion. We're supposed to be knit together. We're the body of Christ. And so it, it, it's so beautiful that, that um, even if it is just sort of us talking, we get to be Christians together. We get to have the same hope together. And that's the greatest hope too, because then it's not just you alone. And it's not just you creating all of these questions in your head alone. Am I enough? But it's no, we are together and together in Christ we are enough. And that is and we have, like that's just beautiful. Yeah. I'm not gonna uh, to top that. You win. <laughs> yeah, thanks for hanging out. Let's do it again. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.